Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. I'm Connor. And I'm Dr. Oliver Bridgewood. Uh, Alex isn't here this week, so Connor's standing in because he's on a top secret mission in Belgium, getting some exciting content, so make sure you stay tuned for that. But don't worry, we've got all your usual favourites and all the latest tech news. And we're going to discuss will we ever run out of carbon fibre? I hope not. First up, the results of the poll from last week's show, which was uh, about dropper posts. So you know, would you want a dropper post on your road bike? Do you want one? Mm, I think it's too much to think about. <laughs> okay. It's just another button. <laughs> I wouldn't do it, no. Um, well, the audience said, no way, not for me. All right, six, 63%. 13% uh, said, hell yes, where can I buy one right now? And 24% were on the fence. So interesting. Most I'm, people don't want to drop post right now. I mean, I would like to try one. I'd be interested to see what it, what it would be like. It's cool. I yeah. think I'd go too fast on descent to just crash. Well, main talking point. Mm. Anyway, we are discussing this week, will we run out of carbon fibre? Thousands and thousands of bikes are made every single year, as well as all the boats, cars, even skateboards these days. And demand is just getting higher and higher for the stuff. Yeah, in global production of carbon fibre is estimated to reach 122,000 tonnes in 2022, and that's up massively from 30,000 tonnes in 2010. So with demand just increasing and increasing, and um, putting a strain on producing this stuff, it does beg the question, you know, will, we, will we run out of it? Well, I think the first thing to understand is where does carbon fibre actually come from? And there are a few different sort of sources for carbon fibre. Ollie does go into more detail on this in a previous video done on the channel. I knew it would come in handy one day. But for now, let's get a kind of quick summary from the expert. Right, so well, the, uh, oh, I've never been called an expert before. Thanks, man. The, uh, <laughs> the main way of making carbon fiber um, is from acrylonitrile, although there are other ways of doing it, uh, such as using pitch, but that's a less common process. So using acrylonitrile, you polymerize it and turn it into polyacrylonitrile and go from there. But acrylonitrile is your kind of starting material. That doesn't that's not found naturally on Earth, although it is, has been observed in the solar system on the moons of Saturn and Jupiter. So we're sending rockets up there for our bikes? We, we might have to, but we could send bike rockets and mine it from those, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, um, until we are able to do that, we make it, and we make it uh, by reacting ammonia with uh, propylene. Now, ammonia comes from a well-established chemical reaction known as the Harbour process. And uh, propylene is made by cracking petrochemicals and natural oil and gas. So what, what, what is cracking, Ollie? Well, cracking is the process of purifying and separating out all the components of natural crude oil and gas, and then also tweaking them into the exact things we want as well. So crude oil and gas contains thousands and thousands of different compounds. Some of it's petrol, some of it's diesel, some of it's jet fuel, some of it's, you know, get gases and things we want, and propylene, which is used in uh, carbon fibre production. So what happens if we run out of oil and gas, like we probably will do one day? Well, if we do run out of crude oil and gas, then there are green chemistry ways of making acrylonitrile and therefore making carbon fibre, um, such as processes involving using biofeed stocks and, and making them from glycerol and uh, glutamic acid. Um, and these are, yeah, green biological sort of processes. Pretty cool. Okay, so we, we do have some backup options. Yeah. The biggest issue we face though isn't running out, but probably demand outstripping supply in a similar way we've seen with cars and the global microchip shortage. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. And you know, one of the things you say is that the, the process of making carbon fibre is incredibly complex and it involves a lot of different components to start from the raw materials and get to the finished product. And you only need one of those things to be in short supply or, you know, struggling, and then you can't keep up with that increasing demand. So an example would be, say, acetone, which is used as a solvent in the process of making carbon fibre. And there's a global shortage of acetone right now. And that is in part down to increased demand in carbon fibre manufacture, but other things as well. So acetone is used to make IPA, not the kind that you drink in the pub, but isopropyl alcohol, which has seen huge demand increase because it's what's used in hand sanitizer. And so I guess if we have, you know, unpredicted events 
happen that affects the world globally, like we've seen a few of those recently, then they can have huge knock-on effects that are very hard to kind of predict. Fundamentally though, carbon is everywhere on our planet. All life that we know about in the universe is based on carbon and made from carbon. And chemistry is always going to allow us to convert you know, one carbon molecule into another and, and get what we need. So, we, you know, until the, the sun implodes, we, we're not going to have, we're not going to run out of stuff. So to conclude, we're not going to run out of carbon fibre, yeah. thankfully. But the point is that the production process is really complicated. And when demand is so high, all it takes is one piece of the puzzle to be in short supply. And we're in a bit of a pickle, aren't we? Yeah. Also, if demand outstrips supply, prices can then get really high. Indeed. Even even higher. Mm. I think the, the interesting thing, though, is in the future, will bikes always be made out of carbon fibre? You know, in 10 years' time, they might be made from something something else. We always hear about new, amazing, exciting wonder materials being created or being researched. And it's, it's like, well, maybe, I haven't really, I'd be amazing, wouldn't it, if bikes are made from something even better in 10 years' time. Yeah, technology is just advancing every single year, isn't yeah. it? It'll be interesting to see what happens. But I mean, do you reckon, though, in like sort of 10 years' time or 20 years' time, if we're like old members of our sort, do you reckon we'll be the guys who are like, no, carbon's real? Like, as these kids in like aluminium foam bikes, and we're just like, no, we'll be in the comments section on GCN <laughs> going, no, these yeah. rubbish. Carbon's I, real. I remember when a bike was seven kilos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who knows? Well, yeah. Let us know in the comments section what you think about this. And, uh, well, on to hot tech. Uh, before we move on to hot tech, though, we will give a shout out to the Global Bike Festival because, well, a lot of people have been sending me questions and sending you questions as well about like what exactly it is because there's a bit of confusion because this kind of event has never happened before. So what it is, is it's, it's, it's a festival for cyclists. <laughs> it's simple. So you can go there and you can do whatever kind of riding you want. It's in an amazing setting in the mountains. There's downhill mountain biking, gravel riding, road riding, epic climbs like the, the Gross Glockner. And uh, it's going to be amazing. But then there's a festival village that's all centred around. So you get to meet and hang out with loads of like-minded people with entertainment happening in the day. You can ride as much or as little as you like. And then in the evening, there's kind of like what I would call Apre cycling. Apre bike. Yeah. Yeah, with some big DJs playing as well. Rob the Bank's going to be there. I mean, it's going to be mental. DJ Oda's my favourite. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, seen him we'll... a few times. He's yeah. blooming good. Um, but yeah, so then after, it's just pies if you, if you want to get involved in that as well. And uh, in an amazing setting with like minded people, first kind of event of its kind, but I think it's going to be great. So yeah, if you've got any questions about it, just fire them down in the, in the comments and uh, we'll do our best to, to answer them. And also let us know uh, if you're coming, because quite a lot of people have signed up so far. So. Yeah. Should be good. Right, hot tech now. Um, starting with the new Merida Time Warp, new TT bike. Alex spotted this, didn't he? Yeah, he did. But it was under wraps. But yes. It's now been officially unveiled. Look at that. It's the new Time Warp TT bike, and it's going to be the time trialing weapon of Bahrain Victorious. And it's got some interesting marketing claims behind it. So, Merida unsurprisingly claim it's faster than the previous one, but apparently this isn't due to aerodynamics. No. Explain more on it. Strange for a TT bike. Instead, they are claiming that it's faster because it's got better braking and comfort. So visually, the biggest change from the previous one is there was a sort of triangular section on the down tube and seat tube junction. You see that on a few TT bikes. That's much smaller now. And also the chain stays and seat stays have been sort of strengthened to accommodate the additional asymmetric forces of, of disc brakes. Um, but also in terms of comfort, the biggest thing is it's, it's um, got an S-Flex seat post to give compliance and the tire clearance, which we know is a big thing for comfort. That's been increased to 28 millimeters. Interesting, it looks cool as well. I do, I do love it. Um, and I can see why having a better braking performance with the disc as well would be uh, really valuable. I never stuck around long enough in, in uh, pro cycling to, to ride a TT bike with disc. But when you're whipping down a descent on a TT Brakes bike. Brakes on TT bikes used to, the integrated one, used to be notoriously mm, terrible. A bit sketchy. So you just had to slow down more. You just couldn't whack into a corner and late brake. You had to progressively brake and it used to slower, unless you were just, you know, a bit a bit wild yeah on a technical technical course um it's only available in a frame set too as well no full bike builds on this one mm, so if you're a tt specialist out there you want to build up your own bike it's a big positive isn't it well it's cool yeah but i mean it does beg the question i wonder if they're doing it for that reason or if they're doing it because of the shortage of bike components um 
that there currently still is, but who knows. So. Bit of a weird and wonderful one for you now. An Argentinian student claims to have found a way to propel a vehicle forward using salt water. What? Yeah, you can propel a bike forward using salt water. I know, it's pretty mad, isn't it? So Santiago Hernandez studies chemistry at university. It's a quality subject. Apparently, uh, yeah, all the best people study that subject, but anyway, he's uh, learning about electrolysis. And in doing so, he seems apparently to have discovered a way to propel a bike forward through this means. Um, I don't really know what electrolysis is, so I'll hand you over to Ollie, the doctor. Well, electrolysis is a process of breaking a molecule apart using an electric current. So you have your molecule in a liquid, in a solution, and then by passing an electric current through it, you cause it to separate out into positive ions and negative ions, and they go to a, a cathode and an anode. It's the process used to get pure aluminium from a bauxite or aluminium oxide, it's ore, it splits apart. Or in the case of this, with salt water, you're gonna be separating things out like sodium chloride into sodium and chloride. I think I think I, I kind of knew that already, maybe. Um, but thanks for the chemistry lesson, just to keep me up to Anytime. speed. But how does this propeller bike forward? I haven't a Scooby. I have no idea. And the thing is, right, is I've looked on the internet and I couldn't find an answer either. What I did find, though, was that Santiago... <laughs> this is ridiculous. Santiago has promised to reveal how, how it works and how you can make one yourself if he reaches 10,000 followers on TikTok. Okay. <laughs> so like, basically, this is brilliant either way. So either he's just come up with an elaborate scam to just get loads of TikTok followers, and it's just, well, what an incredible idea. That okay. is for viral fame. Well, or he's come up with genuinely a, a world-changing invention. Well, we, we'll watch this space. Either way, if you follow me on Instagram, ConnorDone1, um, if I get 100,000 followers, I'll teach you how to get 10 watts a kilo for yeah. uh, an hour. Yeah? Yeah, just yeah, just give me a follow. Okay, cool. And wait until we get 100,000. Good plan, good plan. I need to think of one. Next up, a new bike from 3T. It's the Explorer Race Max Ukraine Edition gravel bike, and it's being offered for 7,500 euros. The really cool thing, though, is that 3T are offering this with 100% of the money raised from the sales all being donated to charity to the local Italian wing of the International Red Cross, earmarked for aid for the Ukrainian people in need. Yeah, nice initiative, that. And, uh, well, it's a cool-looking bike as well. Yeah, it looks amazing. It's pretty cool. More Hot Tech next week. Now, snacks of the week. We've got some snacks this week. We so I've been sent a letter from Matthew Rittenhouse, who lives in Honolulu, Hawaii. How awesome is that? That's now, he cool. says, I, wanna, I wanted to uh, send the GCN crew some famous Girl Scout cookies, okay, um, for Snacks of the Week. His daughter's troop in Honolulu uses the proceeds of their cookie sales to support their work with endangered sea turtles. That sounds nice. like a good cause, doesn't yeah. it? He says, his daughter Zelda has picked out four boxes for... There's only three. Um... Due um, to the ongoing pandemic, some of the cookies are in short supply, so she picked out four boxes of the best ones for us. Anyhow, um, yeah, have a look. The, the samosas are the local favourite and very oh, really? popular on the islands. Oh, I, I've gone for the mint. Yeah, um, have you? Yeah, I'm, thank you so much for sending these in. These have been absolutely amazing. I enjoyed the box. I've never, I've never heard or had Girl Scout cookies mm. before. This is the sort of thing I think in uh, Europe. One of those? You hear about Girl Scout cookies, and you? You just, I've never tried one before. Absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. That's cool, isn't it? Mmm, lovely. Mmm, very nice. That'd be good on a ride. Yeah. yeah so, Next um, bike packing adventure, we need to take. Yeah, yeah these. I'll, I'll, I'll try them out for you, mate. Okay. I'll try them out for you. Oh, thank I'll you. Thank you, Matthew and Zelda. Bye. If you're wondering where myself and Alex are this week, we're on a top secret mission filming some tech videos on the Cobble Classics. And if you want to make sure you can see those videos, just subscribe to GCN Tech and click that bell icon to turn on your notifications. And I guess, well, it's town time for best bike shop yeah. in the world this week, according to you and I. Yeah. Back to you, Connor and Ollie. Ciao and Bella. Oregano. <laughs> Time now for best bike shop in the world this week, uh, where you submit and nominate a, your local bike shop that you think is the best bike shop in the world. It's a chance to celebrate bike shops. You're at the core of just cycling life and sort of infrastructure. You want to talk about bike shops and just, yeah, help them out. Uh, so you submit your submission for the best bike shop in the GCN app using the hashtag in your submission, this is important, hashtag bike shop. That way we can, we can find it in the app. 
So, who have we got this week, Connor? Well, we have got Where's this one. Where's the best one. bike shop in the world this week? This is from Broomwagon Studio. Um, I'd like to nominate Velo Pasadena in Southern California as one I've of the best heard bike shops in the world. Before. You know what? I think I've heard of it as well. Yeah. Um, I've never been to Southern California. Though. Many bike shops in SoCal closing up for good. Velo Pasadena is one of the premier shops in the area. It's the only shop to see really high end bikes in person. They sell brands Pinarello, BMC, Giant, Time, Cornago, Cipollini, and more. And they have one shop with all the latest models and components too, uh, and clothing as well. Uh, tons of new bikes, old bikes, frames hanging from the ceiling. I mean, look at that. It's, it looks um, like a proper what? bike shop, this. I Treasure mean, trove. He says it's got, the, there's like a museum across the road as well, which I think you can see in that photo with just, I mean, that looks incredible. I mean, I, I, I'd be like a kid yeah. in a sweet shop in there. It's the sort of bike shop you go to for like a day out just to root around it. Just go and have a look yeah. at all the cool stuff they've got. That's but amazing. then also in the actual shop itself, there's something really old in there as well. I'd love to know what that is. Plus they've got like retro kit, like the old Maltini jersey. But in the actual shop, you can see it's, I mean, it's packed to the rafters. Yeah, it's packed. Full of new and old stuff, as he says. And all these like jerseys on there as well. So yeah, there's brilliant. definitely like good established links with, with sort of pro riders because they've got, got all that stuff. I mean, that is, you'd be confident taking your bike there for a service, I reckon, wouldn't you? You, you would. You had a problem. You would. It, rem it reminds me of some of the big bike shops in Belgium when I used to live there. And you yeah. used to go for the day out on a rest day. You just route around the bike shop and spend money you didn't have. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, cracking one, cracking up. Like, thanks for sending that one into the GCN app. Well, there you have it. Best bike shop in the world this week is Velo Pasadena in SoCal. So if you're in Southern California, um, or even if you're not, head over there, check it out. Yeah, if you're with your other half and you just happen to be in the area, just tell them there's a nice little coffee shop next door and oh, there's a bike shop. Oh, we're not really going in that <laughs> <laughs> right, it's time now. Yeah. Best bit of the show, bike vault. Bike vault. I yes. love the bike vault. You can ring the bell. I love Connor. it. Where's the, the bell? Where are we? Oh, this one's a bit. Not that. Chill out. Oh, sorry. It's very right. sorry. Very loud. First up, so the bike vault. Submit your bikes to UCN app, and we and viewers at home in the app judge them to be either nice or super nice. The most super nice voted bike. Super nice. From from last Number week one. was this from Jamie Fulton. Have a look at that. What do you make of that? It's a cracking colour scheme, isn't Beautiful it? Beautiful yeah. S-Works tarmac. It's Clean. the same colour scheme as my Orbea Orca. I was, I was thinking that as I was congratulating the design of the bike. Yeah. Um, yeah. A anyhow. But anyway, oh yeah, let's forget Ollie. That very nice. That, that, that is a super nice bike. You can ring, yeah, I think we cracking. can ring the bell for that. Yeah, ring the bell. Give super nice. Ring. Brilliant. Love the backdrop as well. Yes. Um, Built up in advance the Mallorca 312 as well. I hope you uh, did all right in the event. Yeah. Um, we've, we've, next up, we've got Brian T. Wills. What do you make of that? Oh, wow. That is uh, saucy, isn't it? I tell you what, though, I mean, it's, it's, it's like my one, my Pinarello F. I'm, lo I'm, I'm lucky, aren't I? Yeah. Um, but that's out of focus, so for me, it's a nice. Oh, that's a shame. And he's only got one bottle in. He's blown it is a GCM water. He has blown his entire life savings on it, though, Ollie. Yeah, so he couldn't afford a, a oh. camera that focuses. I I give him a super nice photo. It's got way. like a one one megapixel camera. Okay, <laughs> okay then Ollie, so based on that logic, this Penarello F. What was another one? Yeah, there's another one. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's in focus. That's the super nice, surely. Oh, uh, go on then. Sent in it... by AgoF95. Catchy name. It'd be better though if he was using a shadow stand. It would be. Do you nice stand white picket fence too? though behind. Um that's that would almost be a bell drop, that one, I think. If, if he was using a shadow stand. A bell drop? That's like even better than a super Whoa, nice. Oh, that's the first time I've heard of that one. So anyway. I'll give it a little super nice though, because it is a great Yeah, next up, we've got Stephen A. Quinn with his, well, it's rather nice. Is that a Trek de Mane? Oh, and Donegal! Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Trek Amanda. Um, but yeah, that, that, is that Donegal? That's Donegal, yeah. Donegal is an absolutely stunning place. I mean, that's, I'm loving the cloud inversion. Mm, yeah. Really the, magical. The only issue I've got with this, right, is that is a that is like a GCN inspiration photo. It's not a bike vault photo. Yeah, it's, it's entered the, the wrong category in the app. Yeah. It's not side on. I can't clearly see it. It's covered in appendages. It's in biggie, smallie bigs. Smallie bigs. It's it's just a jaunty angle. Tan tire walls though. It's a beautiful inspirational place, but it's a nice. It's a nice. Uh, we have to agree. Uh, but it's Danny Gall. I'm I'm doing the bell. I'm, no, you're I'm not. going we have rogue. To agree. I'm going rogue. We have to agree. Stephen Quinn, I'm no, going rogue. We have to agree. See what the next one is. <laughs> uh, next up, then, seeing as we're not agreeing. F has 63 with his Flandria retro oh, beautiful. bike. Beautiful. 
That is fresh bar tape, it looks like. That is stunning. It's an Esther, it's a restoration. That is beautiful. Oh, um, yeah. And it's got, uh, well, it's a oh, Campagnolo Nuvo record on there as well. Stunning. I love the chrome, chromium, oh, wow. like on the fork and stuff. Spent five years looking around for this one. That's a, that's a stunning. Wow. That's a super nice, isn't that's it? That's a super nice, yeah. No, uh, no disagreement on that one. Where's my bell? Ring me bell. Who have gone next? Love that. We have got, let me see. Fat Boy Slim. Fat Boy Slim. You reckon it is Norman Cook? You reckon it is the Fat Norman, Boy Slim? Norman, if you're watching, come to the bike festival. If this, yo, yo, that'd be incredible, yeah. wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Fat Boy Slim, though, has uploaded this stunner of a, uh, of a gravel bike, Santa Cruz. Um, delayed by the global bike shortage by 18 months, so we had to wait a good while to get it. Yeah, I do like those Santa Cruz stigmatas. They, they, they are like. Definitely more gravelly than roady, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. But they're, they're really like beefy looking, nice yeah, things. Like the matching bar tape too. I well, mean, I think that for me, I think that's a super nice. I'm going to go super nice. Hey? Go on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Apparently that colourway is called electric algae. Electric algae? Yeah. Really? I like that, yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, next up, we've got Stuart's One with his Cabal Aero 2.0, SRAM Red Access on there. What do you nice. make of that? I really like this, actually, and I like the backdrop. Because it's a skate park. Yeah. You love skate that's parks. That's where like, you spend all your time. I do like skate parks. Hanging around with 12-year-olds. No, no, I went to a yeah, <laughs> over 30s night the other day. Over 30s yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. I can do my rock yeah. to fakie now. Yeah, okay. But yeah, beautiful upload to the app. Um, Cranks are slightly misaligned. Mm. I'll blame that on uh, the air in the skate park potentially. I mean, um, I'm I'm on I'm on the fence. I'm a I'm a floating voter here on this. You're one. on the fence. Yeah, so I'll leave it to you. Well, I'm going super nice. It's right. like pure. You're right. It's the skate park. There you go. Um, that's all we've got time for this week. It brings us to the end of the show. Yeah, pleasure to be on the show. Yeah, Love it as always. Good to have you, man. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, you know what to do: like and subscribe, and make sure you check out. Tour of Flanders. That's the next big race in the calendar yeah, we're excited Sunday. about. Yeah, big, big race. Pogacar's riding. Pogacar is riding yeah. Tour of Flanders on the cobbles. My pick's going to be Van Aert, though. I'm going Pogacar, even though I said he wouldn't win in the preview, right. but I'm still going for him. Right. See you later. Bye.